Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. For our announcements, we extend our sympathies to the family of Ardell Hillrood, whose funeral was yesterday at First Lutheran, and also the family of Larry Johnson, Ardell's son-in-law, who passed away the same day that she did. We have finished our summer worship schedule, so we will no longer have Wednesday worship at 7 o'clock at First Lutheran in Granville. <clears throat> and next Sunday, we'll have a joint worship. So 10 o'clock in Granville at the City Park with potluck to follow. Um, I own virtually every lawn game known to man, so I will have them there um, so we can uh, play some of those games too. Um, and hopefully we'll have um, some special music musicians able to join us. I'm waiting to hear on that. Also coming up in September, September 23rd and 22nd and 23rd, which is a Thursday evening and a Friday morning, um, there will be a Turtle Mountain Cluster retreat up at Menkoshi Ministries. Um, we'll be joining the Welka uh, from Rugby at First Lutheran, who have an annual tradition of going up there for an evening meal and kicking off their Bible study for the fall. So we'll be joining on to that using the theme from the Gather Magazine this past summer of um, quilting. So if you want more details, I have all that here. And there might be one on the bulletin board. So um, if you have questions, ask Lucille Loftusness. She is spearheading this whole thing. So do you have other announcements for today? Okay. He likes. He likes. Okay. Also, um, at the end of our service today, um, kids go back to school. Kids go back to school this week. <laughs> There's one mama dancing in the back. <laughs> uh, so, um, before we depart today, we're going to have all the kids come up for a special blessing as they go back to school. So, And if there's any grown-ups that are going back to school, you can come up too. Any, anything else? All right, if not, I'm going to invite you to stand for the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with shining beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Gracious God, we acknowledge that we are sinners, and we confess our sins those known to us that burden our hearts, and those unknown to us but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin, liberate us from the bondage of guilt, work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From the house of David, God raised up a mighty Savior. Remembering the covenant, God delivered us from our enemies. Before God, we are holy and righteous, free to worship without fear. With a heart full of mercy and compassion, God saves us and forgives us all our sins. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, guides our feet in the way of peace. Amen. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you. 
For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our entrance hymn is Faith of Our Fathers. If you want the notes, that's in the green hymnal on 500. <laughs> A reading from Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off, who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. 
who plan to make my people forget my name by the dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for all. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. Let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat? Says the Lord. Does not my word like fire? Says the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. The word of the Lord. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the God. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. <coughs> they do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth were shaken. Now I say to you, you are God's and all of your children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. A reading from Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the wall of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? The time was failing to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, Jeff of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received the dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to attain better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They run about in skins of sheep and goats. Destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite the kids to come up for a little bit. We don't know. We have no big plans. All right. So I have this thing. What's this? Trophy. How do you get a trophy? Winning thing, maybe. They have to be in something. Like clearly, I was like a champion bowler. Do you think so? Maybe. Thank you. <laughs> So, um, Avea just read a story for us that talks about participating in a race, right? Um, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw up everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And that race, um, 
that they're talking about is it's not really like like a relay race or a foot race or anything like that. Um, it's it's our faith, our journey of faith. So um, a long time ago, uh, when the Olympics were in Spain, there was a runner, <clears throat> and his name was Derek Redman, and he ran for the United Kingdom. And as he was running his uh, his race, the 400 meter, he pulled a hamstring, and he went down. And um, so he worked for years, right? You don't get to be an Olympian if you don't devote all of your time and energy to being really, really good, right? Have you watched your life? Yeah, some of that, right? So he worked for a long, long, long time. And he got in that race and he got hurt. Um, and all of them, you know, like the sports trainers and stuff, they ran out there to help him. But he got up. And he started to hop to the finish line. And then this big guy came out of the stands and said, you don't have to do this. Who do you think that big guy was that came out of the stands? Have you ever been in a sport and gotten hurt? Yeah. So who stands up first if you get hurt? Yourself, you think? I'm guessing your mom and dad stand up first. <laughs> so his dad came down and finished the race with him. He didn't win. They were actually the last ones. But they finished the race because he was supported by his dad. Isn't that cool? And that's what our Bible lesson today is about. It talks about a lot of things that they have talked about, a lot of people that um, that suffered a lot um, for their faith. Um, but ultimately, what the story is about is that God will support us in our race, even when we fall down, even when we come in last, God is always beside us, whether it's whether we're winning the race or the last one across the line. So. You admire my trophy, don't you? You're all jealous. So, let's pray. Dear God, we are so thankful that no matter what challenges we have, you are there beside us, helping us to be strong and to be courageous and to do the things that you want us to do. And do the same we pray. Amen. Stand as we read together the gospel affirmation. Alleluia. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Alleluia. And our holy gospel comes from Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and now I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, 
mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some days, I wish I could be three years old again, plugging my ears with my fingers and chanting, la 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 la, I can't hear you, in order to block out the words that I don't want to hear. I recently heard a term called the fifth gospel. We all know about the four Gospels in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They chronicle the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And there are a number of novels that have been written over the years that provide a fictionalized version of the life of Jesus that carry the title, The Fifth Gospel. But the term coined by author Juan Carlos Ortiz, refers to the parts of our Bible that aren't circled or underlined or highlighted. In the fifth gospel, there is nothing like, Lo, I am with you always, or For God so loved the world. Rather, the fifth gospel consists of those things we wish weren't part of the Bible, sayings of Jesus that are hard and difficult to hear, and yet so important for us to pay attention to. Today would be a great day to stop up our ears and make nonsense noise to drown up out the words of Jesus in our gospel, because they certainly rank high on the list of challenging and difficult. Do you think I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, division. Where has Luke's sweet baby Jesus in a manger gone? The one who increased in wisdom and in years and in, in divine and human favor? We like to wrap ourselves up in the image of Jesus as a cute and cuddly baby, even though John the Baptist, when preparing the way for the Messiah, told us that the one who he was unworthy to untie the sandals of, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Which all seems well and good when the words are spoken by a wild and unkempt prophet in the wilderness. But when our sweet baby Jesus speaks words that, are com that completely reflect John's prophecy, we cringe at the hard harshness of them. In our gospel reading for today, we join Jesus and the disciples as they make the journey towards Jerusalem, where Jesus knows what awaits, where we know what awaits Jesus, a cross. So Jesus is getting increasingly blunt with his directives as he tries to prepare the disciples for what is yet to come. For those of us assembled here today, our faith has grown out of our family traditions, just like that first hymn we sang, Faith of Our Fathers. Most of us were brought to the baptismal font as infants, attending Sunday school, taking confirmation classes, and worshiping together with parents and siblings, children and grandchildren on a regular basis. That, however, was not the situation with the early church. Believing in Jesus 
publicly proclaiming that Jesus was indeed the Messiah foretold in Scripture was truly something that would rip families apart. Following Jesus, devoting oneself to the teachings of Jesus, was not only not a popular choice, but it could also be downright dangerous. In our modern world of ease and affluence, living in a country that protects our right to worship God freely, we can often become complacent in our faith. Almost a century ago, German theologian, Luther, Lutheran pastor, and Nazi resistor Dietrich Bonhoeffer spoke against Christian complacency in a book called The Cost of Discipleship, in which he discusses the difference between cheap grace and costly grace. Cheap grace, Bonhoeffer says, is to hear the gospel preached like this. Of course you've sinned, but now everything is forgiven, so you can stay as you are and enjoy the consolations of forgiveness. The main problem with a proclamation like that is that it contains no demand for discipleship. In contrast to cheap grace, costly grace confronts us as a gracious call to follow Jesus. It comes as a word of forgiveness to a broken spirit and contrite heart. It is costly because it compels a person to submit to the yoke of Christ and to follow him. And it's grace because Jesus says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. American pastor and hymn writer Harry Fosdick once said, the world has two ways of getting rid of Jesus. The first is by crucifying him. The second is by worshiping him. Because you see, Jesus never asked us, asked anyone, to worship him. Jesus asked people to follow him, to walk in his ways, to do the things that he did. Worshiping Jesus is easy. Following Jesus is hard stuff. Why? Because even 2,000 years later, following Jesus is totally countercultural. And it seems to be becoming increasingly unpopular, and it can be divisive. The reading from Jeremiah reminds us that God's word has always been unpopular and a challenge to the culture. Worshiping Jesus on Sunday is a completely different ballgame than following Jesus out into the world on a Monday or a Thursday. Being part of a church is easy, but living out Jesus' way of justice in the world caring for the outcast, loving the unlovable, feeding the hungry, visiting the imprisoned, extending care and compassion in every situation and never responding to a situation with violence, that's difficult. That good news brings division because some welcome it with exuberant joy since it is the only good news that they hear. And some resist it because it is a profound challenge to human assumptions about God, the world, and us. There's a sticker on my water bottle that simply reads, Humankind, be both. I stuck it there because I constantly need to be reminded that that message echoes Jesus' command for us to love one another. We might be surprised to hear Jesus say that he has not come to bring peace, but division. But that's because Jesus insists on a gospel of peace for everyone, not just for a few. 
the division Jesus speaks of is not the goal, but it is the inevitable outcome of insisting that everyone is included in God's family. Division and conflict are the price he's willing to pay if that's what it takes to usher in a world of true peace rooted in God's mercy. Jesus paid that price when he was crucified for his faithfulness in God's welcoming ways. The church continues the ministry of Jesus when it enters into the fray of lifting up people the world deems unwelcome or lowly. But the most wonderful witness the church gives and the most divisive things it thing it does is declare forgiveness to every repentant heart in Christ's name, the excluded and the exclusive, the lowly and the mighty. The most beautiful intake, inbreaking of the governance of God is when humble people gather around Christ's table, open their hands to receive bread and wine, and deeply embrace their own welcome and their neighbor's welcome at the very same table. In that sacramental moment, the peace that led to division turns into complete peace. Amen. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word in the green hymnal on 2.30 for the note. Let's stand. This is a hymn by Martin Luther, by the way. Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'll continue with the prayers. Uh, I'll end them. Merciful God, you can respond, receive our prayer. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe, and bless the work of our ecumenical partners. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters, especially fires raging across Europe and historically low water levels there due to drought. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and all people discriminated against based on their gender, identity, or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those gathered here. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep, especially the family of our Del Hill Roots and her son-in-law, Larry Johnson. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. scripture as we uh, prepare to uh, collect our offering comes to us from 1st Chronicles. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever.
Let's pray together the Octatory Prayer. God of the harvest, receive these gifts of the earth and human labor with the offering of our hearts. Feed us with your bread and cup, that we may be signs of your gracious life, made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the priceless grace you have bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ, who died upon the tree of Calvary and rose again to make us living branches, drawing our life from him and bearing fruit in all the world. Send your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth and power, to renew our faith as we receive our crucified and risen Lord who comes to us in his body and blood. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for, you, for, for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gather together by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and dine. The banquet of the Lord awaits all who hunger and thirst for God's love, mercy, and gracious forgiveness. We will receive our elements at the table today with hands wide open. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's service.
Please pray with me. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives, all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kiddos, I'm going to invite you to come back up. We're going to do a little blessing to get you ready for school. Okay? All right, so let's stand up. So do you guys know how, how to do a blessing? Okay, how do I do a blessing sometimes? Yeah, but put my hand on your head. What we're going to do today is we're going to I'm going to hold my hand up, and they're all going to hold their hands up. We're all going to bless you, right? So you can be ready for school. Any grown-ups going to school? All right. Okay. Lord, we ask your blessing on these students as they return to the classroom this week, or next week, or whenever they're going back. Fill them with a desire to learn. Help them to strengthen old friendships and cultivate new ones. May they be reminded of the love and the care of this congregation that surrounds them each school day. Equip their teachers with patience, compassion, and a joy for sharing their knowledge. We pray in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow every day. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming out. Have a great school year. Go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is Lead On, O King Eternal. You can find it in your green hymnal on 495. <coughs>